unusual avian flu is spreading this morning, but unlike prior outbreaks, it's not just birds being affected. This week, the first known instance of a human catching bird flu from a mammal was discovered down in Texas. They came into contact with a likely infected cow. But the flu spread to cows is also a first in the U.S. Currently, the virus has hit at least 13 herds in six different states. The impact on chickens is also growing. The country's largest producer of eggs, Cal Maine Foods, has temporarily stopped production of one of its Texas facilities due to the flu. The company was forced to kill nearly two million hens and destroy millions more eggs to try containing the virus. For more insights under this, I'm now joined by Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller. Uh, Sid, thanks once again for taking the time this morning. Uh, unfortunately, you and I have had to talk about a lot of sad Texas stories lately. But on top of spreading to cows and now a human, the Texas Department of State Health Services also confirming that three cats in the state have tested positive for bird flu. Does this alarm you, Sid? Well, first I'd like to say, you know, I, I represent the consumers and, and the farmers. We mm -hmm. are the Consumer Protection Agency, so uh, consumers need not worry. Uh, th this is not going to be a problem. No, none of the chicken, none of the eggs got into the uh, uh, food system. Uh, even cooking eggs, uh, you know, takes care of the pathogen. So the only person I ever saw uh, eat raw eggs was Rocky Balboa, and I don't think he's doing that anymore. So <laughs> we're good. Uh, it'll, it'll take okay. a bounce back, but the, uh, the, the egg farm will, will be back in full production in three to four months. Okay, that's good to hear. You have worked through other animal flu outbreaks. Put this one into perspective for us. How does this outbreak compare, and, and what makes this virus different? Well, we, we first had a, a mystery disease in our, our dairy herd. Uh, we finally, after about three, almost four weeks, uh, concluded that it was, by uh, confirmed tests, that it was bird flu for the first time ever. Uh, we had one of the dairy workers uh, contract bird flu there. It's only the second human to uh, catch it here in the United States. We had one more in 2022. Very mild case. The only, only symptom he had, he had a mild case of pink eye. So, you know, one out of 341 million people, it's very rare. I think the uh, public sh should feel good about being safe. Uh, we're going to get, well, there's a lot of unknowns how this transferred to cattle. We now think it, it moves from cow to cow. Uh, we didn't think that at first. So we, we've got a lot of research to do, but the milk never, also never entered the food chain. It, it's uh, any dairy products that have been pasteurized are just fine. Okay. Uh, I don't think anything to worry about that. You might want to lay off the, the raw milk or unpasteurized dairy products for a little while Do we figure this out. Yeah, thanks for confirming all that because I think a lot of people are, are concerned and want to know that their breakfast foods, their dairy in their fridge is safe at home. Sid, you and I talked just a few weeks back after all the devastating wildfires that scorched Texas last month. How detrimental has all of this been to your industry and how are the farmers and ranchers holding up right now? Well, it, it just so happens this fire is in the same place where all these dairies are, are suffering the consequences of, of bird flu. You know, we had over 2,000 square miles burnt, a million 300,000 acres. That's the largest fire we've ever had in the state. Miles and miles of fences are going to have to be replaced at a cost of $15,000 a mile. We closed 16 schools, uh, had to evacuate those. We, you know, it's just uh, been very devastating. We lost over 500 uh, houses and barns. They'll, they'll have to be rebuilt. So we've been out raising money for our STAR fund. We have our mental health hotline up, up and running, uh, uh, AgriStress helpline if you want to look that up, and our hay hotline is, is still up and running. We even got 21 truckloads of hay from the state of Alabama, thanks to mm -hmm. Commissioner and, and the Cattlemen and the Truckers Association of Alabama. So everyone's really pitching in and helping out. Yeah, I know a lot of people uh, came came to your aid and, and lent their helping hand during your time of need. Lastly, I know you said the food was safe, but will this double whammy with the bird flu, the fires, have any impact on prices at the grocery store uh, on the horizon, Sid? Well, we, we, we have destroyed all the milk. We've destroyed those hens. We've destroyed all the eggs. But on the overall scale, it, it, it's, it's not anything uh, that will affect the food supply. It's not enough to, to have a shortage, so the prices will remain stable. The food will remain safe. None of this got into the food system. So really, consumers have nothing to worry about at this point, and I don't think they will in the future either.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.